Greetings, my name is Dr. Seth Jenny, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about utilizing software for um, online survey research. Um, what I'm going to be going through today is Qualtrics. However, uh, most people are also familiar with SurveyMonkey. Um, a lot of these same tenets apply to SurveyMonkey as well as Google Forms and you can always go on YouTube and search for tutorials on uh, on those particular programs. So um, I here are all the projects. I've logged into Qualtrics. You can see all of my projects that I've done in the past. Um, I've used Qualtrics to help evaluate interns sending a survey to a internship supervisor um, on site and having them evaluate interns. I've used it for experimental research where we've done pre, mid, and post surveys um, during an intervention. Um, in this case it was with uh, video gaming. Uh, but today I would like to go through a survey that we did um, that was focused on what are college students perceived motivators and barriers to participation in an international experience such as study abroad. And so this was a project that I did um, with an undergraduate honor student, Emily Almond. Um, and this is actually the first part of the survey. And you can see if I, anytime you can click preview, and this is what it looks like on a mobile phone and this is what it would look like on a desktop and that was the very first question and the first piece of it is, is the consent form but um, I'm gonna go back to the, um, this page here what I want to tell you first is outside of the survey you're gonna have some type of email sent with the survey link and so here's an example uh, advertisement that we had for um, Winthrop University students to incentivize them to take the survey. We um, had a t-shirt and water bottle raffle that uh, invited participants to take the survey. Um, so you can see the text here, we invite you to participate in the survey regarding your perceptions of studying abroad. Um, we had included what the purpose of the study was. We included a deadline in this email. Um, we also said how long it would take them to take the survey. We piloted ahead of time so that we knew for that. And then we talk about the incentive. And notice this was the subject of the, um, of the email was to try to incentivize them to click on the email. And so with about 6,000 students attending Winthrop University, we had um, about almost 900 responses just mainly because of this t-shirt and water bottle raffle. Um, so I highly encourage you uh, to incentivize your, your surveys, making sure that it's not an incentive item that will help, that would bias your sample in any way. Um, and then here we say that at the end, you will have the option to be directed away from the survey to Google Form. So there's the Qualtrics link, and then it would go to a separate link so that your responses to the survey was not directly linked to your email address, which, which could identify your responses to make sure your, your responses remain anonymous. Um, and so here, then we have the link to the survey, and then we have contact information of who's conducting uh, the survey. And so now let's go back to the actual survey. Remember that text here is not the consent form. So this is the consent form that was approved by the IRB. And so we have information for who's conducting the research and who's the faculty supervisor um, advisor here and then this is uh, pretty much copied and pasted um, the the subheadings from the requirements of Winthrop University's IRB but we go through the purpose of the study procedures the risk benefits possible cost compensation associated with it here that's where you talk about the incentive item um, then it gets into number of questions, how long it will take, approximately 10 minutes. You have the right to stop the survey at any time. However, we put in here that um, we can use the data that you enter in up until that point um, 
to which you uh, may withdraw um, from taking the survey. Uh, we talk about how this information will be protected. If you have questions from the um, about from the researcher or the faculty advisor, and then we have information about the IRB compliance um, officer. And then that first question, you know, is displayed on that same page is, are you 18 and do you essentially agree to these things? And yes. And now here is a separator for a new page, <coughs> page break. Um, down here is the page break. This is display logic so that if you say yes, then it continues on to the next question. If you do not agree to that, then it would go to the end of the survey. So um, here where you can click and drag and tr move the uh, different pieces, um, questions on here. So now we get into the demographic questions. We remind them that this is confidential information. We ask their uh, GPA, uh, their university they attend, how far from home to, is Winthrop University, what's their citizen status. Uh, are they transfer students? So these are questions that are really, for us, important to the topic of this of the study. So you may have demographic information such as age and class year and gender, but you also probably are going to have questions that relate to what you are um, going to be asking specifically. So you know, if you, if you're studying um, a particular uh, health attribute, you might ask smoking history, for example. So now we get into um, questions that allow a type of um, Likert scale uh, to what is the chance that you would be studying abroad, and then we try to define what short-term and long-term means that includes both of those short-term and long-term types of things. And then we get into tell us about your most recent study abroad experience so that if they say, I've already done a study abroad trip, We've got display logic, which goes down to, all right, well, where did you go? How long was that um, study abroad trip? Was it with Winthrop or their current university? What was the purpose of the trip? And then um, we wanted them to, these are open responses. Open response, what were the benefits that you felt you got from studying abroad? And so these are open response qualitative text boxes they um, write that in then we list what were the biggest barriers for you to going on that study abroad trip and you it's open response again and then uh, same people now now we want to know um, what were the motivators for you to be studying abroad so that first one was what were their benefits, the experience benefits. The second one is what were the barriers. And then this one is what were the motivators for you to want to study abroad again. Those were all open response. So now I've scrolled up back to that first question that had that display logic, which um, you know has the conditions if they chose that they had studied abroad. So for that statement, then it would skip to question 60. Here's where if they did not select this response, then it would go to question 26. So these are the people that answered any of these options other than they already had studied abroad. And we're gonna go down to 26. And then there, they would continue on with the survey right here, where what are their motivators for studying abroad in an open response format. But I wanna show you a little bit about some of the information that you can have within the different questions here. So this is the style of the question. It, this is a matrix table here. So you can have descriptive text options. You can add graphics. You can have a text entry. That's that open response options. You can have a slider bar where um, people are going to be sliding their responses. So there's a lot of different options within this. Um, let me go back to here. This is the number of statements within the question. So we have um, six response options here. It's a Likert style option here. We're allowing a single answer. We're making it mobile friendly. And here's an important piece. Forced response means they cannot continue on with the survey unless they answer that question. And so there'll be some questions that you 
you want to get. And so you're going to, if for them to get that shirt, then uh, they have to answer that question to move on in the survey. Um, and so here's some other actions, adding a page break, display logic, which I showed you, skip logic, that sort of thing. Okay, so those are some of the different options within the questions. Uh, let me show you some other styles. So here's another, based upon the literature, so we did a literature review looking at what were the most common reasons that people would want to study abroad. And we had some Likert options for l l overall life experience, um, getting something like that on your resume, opportunity to live in another country. So those are all based on literature. And so we wanted to know what were some of those perceptions. Uh, and then we had a click and drag based upon literature. How would you rank these things as the things that would be most influential for you to studying abroad versus the least influential and you would click and drag those responses into what order you believe and then the same thing based upon the literature what were some of the most common reasons people give as a barrier to studying abroad and so we um, had these types of questions here that they um, responded to and then we could do um, a similar type of uh, what's your number one answer and your number 10 answer for some of those barriers for that. And so lastly, um, you know, some of the statistical analyses we did is we compared gender and we looked at um, what were some of the uh, significant responses for females versus males for some of the perceived barriers and perceived uh, motivators to want to study abroad. So you can do all different types of analyses. That's just some examples for that. Um, and then here is that link they would go to Google, a separate survey essentially, uh, uh, capturing people's email addresses if they wanted to be added to um, that list for the incentive item. So I'm going to go back into that preview mode that which you showed you at the beginning here. And here's that consent form. We're going to scroll down and we're going to, yes, agree to it. So this is still just a preview. Now we're going to um, look at, um, and so even in this preview, we can see that um, this is a little bit hard to read. Uh, on this version over here, it's not, not too bad. But so, that, so that's something that we maybe would want to modify for that. So we're a stellar student. We're a Winthrop student. Um, I'm just going to. Give a few answers here. Say we're sophomore. So open text so that um, rather than giving ranges, we're asking their exact age. Uh, let's see, training. And so I didn't re answer that one. Let's see what happens. Oh, so that was a forced response question. So I'm going to answer that question. And we'll go to the next one here. And so now I'm going to say I some chance to study abroad. And now we can see that here's the what if any motivators are there to studying abroad. This is open response. So I'm going to be typing in those responses. Let's say that I change my answer. And now I've got, okay, well, I've studied abroad. So what's the uh, location that I studied abroad and you can see some of that display logic difference with those. So I hope this video gave you some information about um, what types of things you would put in an email that would go along with a, uh, a survey link and then how you might structure that survey going from a consent form um, to collecting a digital signature um, after IAB approval and then some of the different options you might have with online survey software uh, in trying to make sure you incentivize uh, a survey to try to get and increase your response rate.